And welcome to another three string cigar box guitar lesson. So we are still in DAD tuning here, I'm trying to get the most out of these strings before I stick some new ones on. And uh, we're just looking at some basic chords using nice easy Elvis songs. So probably sort of beginner level this one's quite good. And then uh, just looking at some variations of the sorts of chords that you will typically use in a 12 bar blues as well. So uh, this is actually a lesson request so feel free to drop me a line and uh, if it's a good idea i will certainly consider it uh, there was another one actually where someone was asking if it's possible to do hendrix on street three strings and uh, it is but uh, i need to go back to gdg so you'll have to hold on for a few minutes with that one so i'll stick, stick a new set of strings on and we'll try that soon uh, but let's just tune up and then we'll crack on so there's low d There's middle A. There's high D. So most songs don't actually have so many chords in them. Uh, so the Elvis one has only got four different chords in. It's a good sort of beginner level song, but um, you know it's really catchy, really memorable. So uh, often in, in songs, if you have too many chords, it can sound a little bit messy, a little bit cluttered. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through what the, the most sort of strongest, the most common chords that we use in this particular tuning, D A D, and um, you can download a accompanying PDF like chord box sheet so that that's got a whole bunch of them on so if you encounter some different chords in different songs you can you can check that out but in this particular one um, it's in what we call a major key okay so this is the same key as the original and um, this is D and then there are two other major chords in this particular uh, in the verse, so in this, in the key of this song, and they are G and A. Okay, so I'm just going to go over to the close-up, and I'm just going to just explain just a tiny bit about how the theory works without getting too heavy. So we've got um, the key of D is based around a D major scale. Okay, so we've got D, and then it would be fret two either of the bottom or the top strings there's an E F sharp is fret 4 uh, don't, don't worry about whether the notes are sharps or flats it's just how it works with this particular key this scale fret 5 is G fret 7 is A fret 9 is B fret 11 is C sharp and then we're back to D so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the octave. You don't count that as the eighth one because it's the same as where we started. Okay, so uh, the most common chord sequence that you get is for blues and for like pop and what have you as well, is the three major chords that you get in this key because each of these notes that I just laid out, they, they can become chords, okay? Uh, but not all of them become major chords, only three. Get my fingers right there. So, just make sure we've got focus there. So, the first one, G, uh, D, that one is a major chord. So, uh, I would, the easiest way of doing that is just, just go for fret four on the top string, like a couple of open strings, that's pretty straightforward. I imagine most people can manage that. But then the, not the second, not the third, but the fourth chord um, in the scale, which happens to be on fret number five, 
that is a G. And that wants to be a major chord as well. So in the verse, I was using this particular shape here. So that's like fret 2. And then fret 5. With an open string 1. So I've covered covered this shape quite a bit. It's quite a tricky one. Uh, it's a bit of a stretch there. You've got to sort of bridge bridge this round so it's not catching everything else. But that, that's, that's a G. And then... I was going in the verse, I was, I was going to the A there. So just counting up the scale, A would be fret 5, fret 7, sorry, A, A is fret 7. But this is a nice open chord shape to play. Uh, so I've got fret 2, open, fret 2. That's actually a power chord because it only has two of the normal three notes that we have in like a major chord. Uh, but it still works really well. So in the verse, I was just playing D and then G and then A. Okay. And then in the chorus, it goes to... So, so th those three are like the strongest sounding chords. Uh, so anything, say, like Twist and Shout by the Beatles, that it, it's in a different key, the original, but it's the same sort of um, relationship between the major chords, it's the 1st, the 4th, and the 5th. The 1st, the 4th, and the 5th chords in that key, in the key of D, which is what we're tuned to. The chorus goes to the next strongest sounding chord, which would be the 6th one, which would be a B. Okay. Now, we only get three major chords in what we call a major key, which is relating to that scale that I played at the beginning. So this one's going to be a minor. Now, uh, that's, that's a bar there. So if you remember how you bar in, your thumb needs to be directly behind where your first finger is, OK? So just barring across all three, sounds great, that's actually, because uh, it repeats around this uh, three times, this sequence, and that's actually all I was doing in, in the, um, for, for the first two times of the sequence, so I was playing the B, and then I was dropping down to the A at fret 7, and then the G at fret 5. Uh, so they're all power chords, which works pretty well. Uh, but if you wanted to turn them into the, major or minor versions of the chords then you'd have to add your pinky finger on so if that's fret 9 your little finger your pinky finger needs to go on to fret 12 and that is now a minor a b minor chord okay and if i drop down to fret 7 this is getting a bit of a stretch so i need to be on fret 11 7 and 11 for the a major because if I'm on fret 10, that's a minor. And then G is fret 5, and you've got to stretch all the way up to fret 9, which, because uh, obviously the frets get wider the further down towards the headstock you go, so that's, that's a proper stretch. So, to be honest, you just probably want to do the bars there. Sounds great. You can hear it stepping down. That's really good for the chorus. Uh, but you could also play chords in alternate positions so fret 2 and fret 4 so fret 2 on the middle string and then fret 4 on uh, the bass string and then open open high D that's a B minor and I could just use this open uh, D uh, a sorry a power chord and then I could go to this G again which is fine. Um, probably sounds better doing the chorus up there though. So that's that's what I was doing in the tune. And so what, what this entire song is doing is it's just using the four strongest chords in the key of D. And like I said, the original's in the key of D, so you can play these and you can play along with Elvis. How cool is that? 
Um, but there's a bunch of other chords as well, which which you, you can have, and um, it would be you know you can have like a E minor, F sharp minor. There's your G. There's your D. There's your. Sorry, that's an A. I'm thinking of different tuning, and then there's a B minor. You know, so so you, you can you can have other chords, but. Um, we're, we're, we're only using the really strong sounding ones in this one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to swap over guitars just so that you can see how you either change the key of the song if you use the same shapes or you have to change the shapes if you want to stay in the same key. So Let's go straight back to the close-up and hopefully that will make a bit more sense. Okay, different guitar. So um, this is the old blue one. With, this is a G, D, G. So what we'd class as our standard tuning. So if I wanted to use exactly the same shapes as what we were just doing on the, the brown one, then there's fret four on the top string. So that is now a G chord. So um, we're, we're tuned to a G power chord. The previous one was tuned to a D power chord. So that's a G major scale. So now if I just use the same shapes, I'm now in the key of G. So there's a G. There's, that's now a C. And then, just sort of the focus there, and then that is a D. So that's a bit brighter, a bit higher sounding. Um, and then say if I'm going for the chorus, fret 9, that's now an E. Or if I added this one in, it would be an E minor. But again, I'm just going to stick with the power chords. However, if you wanted to play along with the original, if you wanted Elvis to do his job and we'll just play the chords, then what we've got to do is we've got to keep the original chords, which were D. And then we had a G. And then an A. So I'm playing completely different shapes. So instead of playing the D up here, I might even, I might even play it down there. So I could play that as my first chord in the verse and then I could just play an open string strum and then I can hear the sound of the, the chord going up from G to A. Sounds fine. Uh, chorus A, B. I could play the, the, the B up here, B minor, uh, but again just power chords. So you can see how, or hopefully you can hear how it sounds like the same song, but we're, we're, we're uh, having to completely change the shapes because uh, we're in a different tuning, like our open strings are tuned to a different, effectively a different key. If we class the open strings as being like the root, the start point, they're a different key compared to the brown one. So a quick change uh, back on the brown one. So if you want to play along with the track or if you just want to play it on your own then um, please go and download the free song chart. So it's a dead dead simple structure, it's just like basically lots of verses and choruses but it's, it's useful to know what's going on. There's, there's a couple of breaks here and there as well. And um, let's just have a very quick look at some basic strumming. So uh, just to give you a bit of an idea of what's going on. Okay. So I'm not spending too long on kind of in instruction here. It's more just talking about how chords work, like in different keys and things. But uh, here's a good strumming pattern for it. So there's your D. Now, uh, four beats in a bar, lots of alternate strumming. So we're going to go down, up, down, up, this, up, down. Okay. 
do that a bit more slowly. So just double check the focus. And then we've got down, pop, down, pop, miss, pop, down. I'm, I'm finishing early, uh, just at the end of the bar so that we can get on to that nasty chord without too many dramas. Now this is half a bar here. That was a full bar for that D. This is half a bar, just two beats for the, 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 the G and then two beats for the A. So it's got a bit of energy, it's got a bit of pace to it, the song, it sort of trucks along nicely, so it's fine to do just down strokes when you've got what you call a split bar. Just down strokes. So we've got, uh, it's a four bar section, um, se se sequence for the verse. So it's D for a bar, and then it's half a G, half an A, and then just two bars of D at the end. And then it starts again, we'll start on D, and then G to A. And then I, th I think he does that four times just to go with the, 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 the vocals. And then, in the same way, when it goes to the chorus, you've got uh, two beats for the, the B up on fret nine, two beats for the A on fret seven, and then full bar for the G. I'm just going to recycle that same strumming pattern. So two downs, two downs, down, up, down, up, up, down, up. If you can see that. Here it is again. Down, up, down, up, up, down, up. Okay. So that is basically a good way of strumming it. So um, take your time with that. Check out the structure and you'll be playing along with Elvis in no time. So um, the only other thing to have a look at is, uh, or what I said we would have a look at, is uh, just how you use different shapes in a blues. So a typical 12 bar blues sequence or structure will we'll use the same three major chords as we were just using in the verse of uh, the Elvis tune. So in now you get songs in loads of different keys, but because we're in the key of D here, then it's D, G, A. But what we'll often do in blues, just to make it sound a bit more gritty, we'll actually use some uh, seventh chords. And um, because the, the, what I was playing at the beginning, it, it was relatively slow. There's quite a lot of space. You know, you, you, you're hanging on particularly the G chord for quite a long time before you change. So you, you want some different places where you can play the same chords just to give it a bit of variation. So I'll just go through a few possibilities that you could use in a 12 bar blues. Okay, so um, key of D. So there's the D major, that's what we were doing in the Elvis song. But if we want to turn that into a seventh chord, we can add in fret three on the middle string. So straight away you can hear it's got a bit more of a, a bit more of a twang to it. It's, it's not quite as settled, uh, which is great for blues, gives it a bit of grit, like I said. We can even, if we wanted, fret an, an extra note for the normal G, so that's not a seventh, uh, which can be nice for if, if you're kind of playing like riffs, little little sort of licks, slides and things. So that's fret five and fret four, you know, so you can do that, or you can do that. Uh, it's just good to have options. There's your seven. Now, uh, you could even play it with fingers one and three, because what I was doing in the original, I was going, It's got a bit of a sort of early Muddy Waters kind of vibe to it, that. I was, I was dropping that fret three down to fret two. But it's all, it's all based around D and D7. Okay, but we can also play the D somewhere else. We can go up here, we can play fret seven, fret nine. That works quite nicely. Still got the open low, low D ringing. I could even go right up get a high fret 12 and keep that fret 9 on. So they're both variations of your not open normal D. If you want to play another 7th up here, you can go right up to, you can have 9 and 10. 
Now that's quite nice because it's the same shape as what you had down here on frets 3 and 4. It's like a little diagonal on frets 9 and 10. So all of that in total is going to give me quite a lot of options that I can use um, when I'm trucking away on a 12 bar blues in D. When you go to C, uh, sorry, when you go to G, the, the, the next chord, you can just do a very typical sort of um, blues sort of bass line thing, where if you can get your little finger up on fret 8, and maybe third finger on fret 7, that works really well. This one's not being used, by the way. And we can even do the same thing when we're up here on D. But we can also play the C down here. So if we want to play, sorry, G, I keep telling you what the chords are called in the key of uh, G, D, G tuning. This is a G chord. And then if we want to turn that into a seventh down here, probably the easiest thing to do is just drop, drop that bass down. Sounds a little bit kind of mungy, but again, it gives it a bit of grit. Not not a bad thing for, for blues. Um, you, you can add add that in. That's not easy though. It's not an easy shape to hold. So that's fret five, fret two, fret three. Much easier to go down to fret three on, on the bass. And then obviously, you know, we've, we've done loads of like turnarounds. You know, where you just do a, a descending three, two, one. And then if you want to carry on, go to a D, uh, an A, done it again, uh, and then start again. So here's a blues. So remember, it's four bars of the first chord, D, two bars of the next chord, G, two bars of the first chord again, which is D, and then we'll do one bar of A, one bar of G, and then there's a turnaround. So this is a little introduction. D, 7. So I'm using the slide. There's a high D and 7. There's the 7. G. Open G and there's the riff up to A. Same trick works really well. Same trick. There's a descending. That's just a high, high version of that was literally an octave higher. So if that's frets um, three and four, that's 15 and 16. Okay, so that's it. Um, the blues is probably a bit more complicated than the Elvis one. So uh, you can maybe have a have a noodle around that. Now there's there's a whole bunch of different videos where we've looked at sort of 12 bar blues structures and things. So you can, you can go and check those out. Uh, or, you know, you can just sort of copy that and play, play along with that. But I believe that will do for this lesson. So probably going to have a look at a few riffs uh, using different scales in the next couple of lessons. So look at some sort of famous riffs using different types of pentatonics or maybe seven note scales, major, minor, that type of thing. Um, but yeah, hope that was useful. Hope you found that fun. And we'll see you here again soon on Coda Guitar.